What's going on, you guys? And welcome back to the Virtuous Coach Podcast. And in today's episode, I want to share with you guys three ways that I believe you can get better at jujitsu more quickly. Unfortunately, they're going to come dressed in work clothes for you guys because there's no real way to get better at jujitsu fast. There's just consistency, there's just hard work, and there's just showing up to the gym over and over and over again. Now, you guys might notice if you're watching this on YouTube that I am back on video. If you listen to my last podcast, I mentioned that one of my goals for my business this year was to just get back on YouTube more frequently. In the past, I did a lot of vlogs. I did um, just some content where I was just trying some things out. And ultimately, I just want to be everywhere all the time. And I want you guys to just be filtered by or hit with me with just great content. And I put so much effort into this that I just want to make sure that um, I am everywhere all the time. So video, I'm back. Nice to see you guys through the podcast on YouTube if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're listening to this in your car, I'm glad you're here too. But if you want to see my smiling face as I give this content, you can jump on YouTube and see that. But like I said, today's episode, we're going over three ways to get better at jujitsu just simply because it is the most common thing that I hear from every new student that joins our gym at Virtuous Grappling. Um, And I think this just comes from a place of when you do come into the jujitsu gym, you're often just getting crushed by everybody. I can think about when I first started my jujitsu journey, I was fresh out of the Navy. I was I had basically been choked out by a good friend of mine at a party. He put me in a guillotine and I tapped out and I used to think of myself as a pretty tough guy. And here I was being dealt uh, a, a nice dose of humility from a good friend of mine. And I just decided that I wanted to go into a gym we had gone out on a little underway as well when I was in the Navy and all the Marines on board were doing their Marine, uh, Marine Corps martial arts, I think is what it's called, but they were basically doing it in the hangar bay. And, um, I was just kind of blown away by like, I don't know, I was fascinated by watching these guys grapple and wrestle and be able to subdue each other. And sometimes a smaller guy would be the bigger guy. And I was like, man, I'm a big guy. What if I learned this thing? I could be pretty good maybe. So Got back from deployment after getting smoked by all those Marines all the time. Walked into my first gym. It was called the Eastern Academy of Martial Arts. It was ran by my first jiu-jitsu black belt, Alan Morello. And then my my MMA coach, well, who later became my MMA coach and my first Muay Thai coach, uh, Greg Smith. And those guys basically changed my life. They taught me this, well... They basically helped me to develop a love for jujitsu. They eventually allowed me to start my CrossFit gym inside of their gym. Greg and Alan, if you're watching that, I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. Thank you so much for everything you did for me. But, you know, I started my gym in there. And as I was going through my like early jujitsu journey, I was losing weight. I was feeling strong. But I would be lying to you guys if I didn't share with you that I was pretty, I was getting beat up very often. I mean, I would actually go in during the day because at the time I worked as a government contractor. So I would go in during the day. And I would basically be roughed up by uh, a a black belt at the time. His name was Scott. And then Alan was still a brown belt and Greg was a blue belt. And I would go in and just get destroyed by these guys for about 90 minutes. Because I was essentially going in, uh, you know, they were a new school at the time. I was like, you know, a a guy that, one of the only guys that was like general population from uh, their client list that was coming during the day to actually train. Because they had like a daytime class that was usually pretty light, mostly them training. And then they had their evening class. And I would go to both when I could, but ultimately my main training time was during the day. I think back then that was kind of my superpower because when I would go in, I would just basically be smushed into the mat by these guys for that entire 90 minutes. But what it did is it taught me a lot about jujitsu. I learned a lot about what not to do. I learned the lesson of humility and patience and just understanding that you're not typically going to get better fast. You're just going to have to keep showing up and keep being consistent. And I think for me, the big measuring stick was when I would see some of these new white belts come in off the street. And it, it almost felt like they were slow. Like I could kind of, I knew what they were going to do. And that was just because I had the time in, I had the hours on the mat and I'd spent a lot of times being crushed by older guys, or I'm sorry, more senior guys in jujitsu. But that being said, uh, as I've been training for a little bit longer and I've been coaching a little bit longer, I've kind of discovered what I believe, not necessarily a secret, what I believe is a very potent way If you kind of look at your jujitsu journey through this filter and through this lens, I just feel like it's a very potent way to get better at jujitsu quickly, if there was actually a way to get better at jujitsu quickly. So first and foremost, when you come to the gym, uh, a a uh, well-planned out instructor, somebody who spends time thinking a lot about like maybe some of the weaknesses and some of the deficiencies within their gym, when you walk into a facility like that, 
you're often going to kind of come to having multiple exposures to a similar technique. And hopefully, like I said, if the instructor's doing well, hopefully exposures to techniques that are going to be a weakness that your, your instructor has seen in your game, or maybe that the instructor hasn't shown to you um, in, in, in a long enough period of time, right? Maybe it's, it's something that's a series that hasn't been touched on in a few years, maybe a year, maybe less. But ultimately, at the end of the day, a well-thought-out instructor, when you come to that gym, they're going to be showing a technique series that will be an opportunity for you to improve on your learning. The most important thing that I can share with you guys within that is to make sure that whatever the, te the technique that the instructor is showing that day, to actually try to apply it. I think a lot about th this concept of like focus drilling, where it's like, I've taken this thing that I've learned today. You know, maybe your instructor shows two things, maybe three or four. I ultimately, no matter what my coach, my professor is showing, I try to learn one to two things outside of or inside of that lesson for the day. And then I will go into my drilling. I will go into my sparring for that day. And I will actually try to apply it as best I can. Now, here's kind of the caveat. You're likely not going to pull it off very many times. But I'm here to tell you, if you pull it off against a, an opponent who also just learned the same thing as you you are far likely more to retain that thing in your mind because you did it in an environment where that person knew it was coming. And then later on, as you continue to you know, stick that thing into your game and maybe some of the other students are, who aren't on the same path as you, they won't know it's coming and then that technique can work a little bit better. So I fully believe learning the technique of the day if your instructor is well thought out, I know uh, for us at Virtuous Grappling, we think a lot about like the deficiencies of our people and how we can make sure that we're pushing them in the right direction. So again, technique of the day, that's the number one way to improve your jiu-jitsu. Number two, self-study. I know I have met a, a bunch of like OG instructors, a lot of older black belts who kind of been in the game for a long time. I find in some circles and in some environments, again, I've been, I've been around a, real, a lot of really good black belts in my time. There are a subset of those people that really just kind of look down upon instructionals. And maybe in the past, there wasn't some of the best instruction out there. And, you know, I can see where maybe like some of these guys could get jaded and feel a certain way about this. But at the end of the day, now, the, the, the time of recording this podcast and this video, there is a lot of high quality instruction out there in the world. I mean, just websites like BJJ Fanatics that have some of the highest level guys who are making high quality instructionals on there and sharing some of their secrets or their their secrets or their best stuff like you can go on there and for you know under two hundred dollars a lot of times you can go in and especially if you catch them on one of their sales you can get a really good instructional for fairly cheap I always look at it as like that's the equivalent to being like the fly on the wall in some of these rooms when some of these guys are teaching or running a seminar or whatever it may be I get to go in I get to on my time on Whatever time that I have available, I can plot a notepad, I can take notes, and I can take some of these things that these guys are showing, and I can put it into my brain and then take it to the gym and actually try it out. So I'd, I do that a lot now just simply because I am coaching a lot. Like we've got a black belt at our gym named Sean Gasper. He's fantastic, but he coaches wrestling for the high school. So we got to share him with other people. And when he goes and he does his coaching and his um, running his wrestling teams for me, I find that is when my self-study is the highest and when I'm actually retaining the most stuff because I truly feel like I need to really understand the things that I'm showing. I think my biggest weakness as a jujitsu instructor is um, I, I'm not the best at like remembering names of things. A lot of times I, I really struggle with, because again, I'm six foot five, 235 pounds. Like I struggle in certain positions or to show things a certain way, because a lot of times things just, you know, there's certain tweaks and certain positions that are a little bit different because I am so tall and I am so heavy. And I find sometimes when I am coaching people that relating that to people that have like such a different body type than me can be very, very challenging. But when I go and I do my own self study, it allows me to really comb through this like wide body of information and to, to, I guess, more efficiently put together a great series for our people that can help kind of shore up some of their deficiencies as well, right? So this is just kind of some of the behind the behind the scenes of uh, you know behind the scenes of us at the gym. But um, again, a good instructor should be doing this. And if you're you know if you're local to us here in Silverdale, Washington, and you or Bremerton, really anywhere in Kitsap County, and you want to come and you want to experience some of this environment, like I, I just want to invite you, like shameless plug here, shameless self promotion, just because I believe so strongly that what we're doing right now is really really potent. 
Um, so that being said, uh, the first thing that I share with you guys, a good way to get, get better at jujitsu more quickly is to just simply learn a technique of the day. The second one is to do your own self-study. Now I, I'll throw one disclaimer, if you will, inside of there for like doing your own self-study, make sure it's like a reputable instructor. Don't just go and consume things from YouTube because it looks good and it looks flashy. I have found in my 12 years of training that when it looks flashy, it's usually absolute trash and it doesn't work well. And you're likely going to look stupid trying to pull it off in an environment around guys who actually train and have experience. So as you're doing your own self-study, make sure that you make sure it's a reputable coach. Maybe ask for your professor or your instructors who they study, who they go and learn from, and then you can go and you can kind of do the same thing with your own self-study. So number three, number three, I hope Pretty much everybody just does this more naturally, but if maybe if I give this to you, you'll be more intentional about it. Self-discovery is, the, is gosh, I would say that's kind of what brings this entire thing together because if you're learning the technique of the day from your coach, if you're doing your own self-study and you're trying to apply it in live resistance environments or maybe you've got a really good training partner and you've got to open mat time, you can go in, you can practice the thing, you can be like, well, hey, how did this feel when my grip was like this? Or is this, does this feel tighter? Did that feel like it actually worked? How's my pressure? You know, you know, how, how does your base feel? Like you can, you and your buddy or your training partner or whoever you're like going through some of this stuff with, you guys can kind of troubleshoot some of the things. And I know for me, a lot of times when I'm learning something, sometimes I like miss a detail or, you know, I'll be doing a thing. I do it a lot when I instruct, I'll, I'll go and I'll show a move and then I'll watch people starting to make a mistake. And then I'll realize in my head, like, oh man, I forgot out. I forgot this specific detail that I need to share with my people. And then I'll bring them back in and we'll go in and we'll, um, we'll, we'll, trouble, I'll, I'll tell them the thing that I noticed that I left out. And usually I just try to admit it like, Hey guys, I forgot to show you X, Y, Z. Here's a little detail to add in every once in a while I'll joke. And I'll be like, I was trying to keep this secret to myself, but ultimately like that self-discovery, like led me to discover the thing. So for you guys out there, when you're learning things or, you know, maybe it's not a technique that you've studied or you've seen an instructor do, but you kind of always pull this thing off. Maybe you can kind of go through. I know a lot of times I'll have like sweeps or certain ways that I will apply pressure to people in different situations. And there's not really like a technique. It's just something that I kind of do. And then I have discovered, and then I've kind of troubleshooted it with, you know, a, a training partner of mine or something like that. And then when I go into these environments and I'm like actually trying to teach it, it all came through like the self-discovery that I had inside of training. So um, again, you guys, there's, there's not really like a fast track way to get better at jujitsu. Like I've been training for 12 years. I took like a four year break inside of there. So I've actually been at this thing, like almost 15, 16 years. Um, I don't count that time that I didn't train, but you know, I would say there was a period of time where I was like only learning from the instructor and I got a little bit better, but I was actually improving like at the same rate as everybody else. And if you're okay with that, perfect. We've got one guy at our gym named Will. He's, um, we call him pure blood because he is, he's only learned from us. We don't think that he does any sort of self-study or anything like that. Maybe some self-discovery in there, but for the most part, just technique of the day is the only thing he does. And he's really, really good at jujitsu. So I just think that like, ultimately you can get better, just, you can get good at a decent rate, especially if you're at a good reputable gym with a, an adequate curriculum and coaches that think a lot about like helping their people to improve. Like you can get better like that. But I think like if you're looking to get better, quote unquote, faster, you want to move faster than everybody else. Maybe you want to, you want to compete at a high level just because you love jujitsu. Maybe you've got a wrestling pedigree and you want to pick up as much jujitsu as you possibly can and to like expedite this thing, you can for sure add in the element of self-study with your technique of the day and then getting in there and just simply troubleshooting things. If you find yourself stuck in certain situations or like you can never hit a specific technique, take a training partner in there, have them work through it, have, you know, tell them what typically happens to you in these environments so that you can learn to kind of troubleshoot that stuff a little bit and, you know, maybe correct that deficiency that you have in these particular, uh, you know, positions or techniques or submissions, whatever it may be. So again, just to recap and to sign off from this podcast, really, I, again, I should put a big disclaimer on this entire show. There's no like advanced way to get better at jujitsu, but if you apply these three like lenses or like pillars, if you will, into your training, it's likely to help you to improve faster than people who are not doing this. And then also remember at the end of the day that there are 
just freak of natures who can come in and they're just going to get good and you can't really do anything about it because it's in their, it's just in their mind. It's in their, their genetics. They're just able to pick up on something and make their body do certain things. Just know that like these three pillars can help you based off of like who you are as a person to improve a little bit more quickly. So number one, again, learn the technique of the day. Number two, self-study, go pick up instructionals, go join a membership site of some sort, go, get onto somebody's page who has taken the information that they know and they have quantified it and categorized it in a way that is easy to consume. And then lastly, your own self-discovery. Get into the gym, try some of the things that you have learned from people on you know, a training partner, have them give you feedback, shoot through particular things that you find that are like deficiencies in those techniques, and then that can help you to truly improve. So that's three things I got for you guys today. Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. As always, if you got some value, take a screenshot, share it on your phone, post on your Instagram story, and then go ahead and tag me in. And I'm at Coach Cody Smith. Um, I'd love for you guys to do that. We, we, we want to grow this show. We want to make sure that this gets in the hands of more people. And if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. Click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any future videos. Thank you guys for being here, and we'll see you on the next one.